a tweet. It's the rumor mill. But this is a rumor that we've been uh, deeply invested in, I would say, for the better part of a year, is uh, the rumor that Stitt is officially laying the groundwork for a presidential run. Uh, he talked about it to a group of pastors saying, God is calling him to run. Uh, got this info from a trusted source, according to uh, this gentleman on Twitter. Um, you know, like, our take back out because that's where i took it from um you know we've been saying this on stream for a long time uh stit is you know gets in the middle of kind of every national issue tries to get out in front tries to make a case for himself uh loves doing the fox business news circuit all that good stuff and like my take is is that he could win it all i mean i really think he is kind of the perfect amalgamation of far right-wing ideologue and, you know, business Republican that a lot of people in the middle of the country can, or, or near the middle of the political spectrum could get on board with. And, but he's like really into reactionary politics and he doesn't have like Trump's like horrid backstory and just noxious personality uh, and, and of course, potential like methamphetamine habit and all that. Uh, so, uh, so uh, anyway, just, that's, that's my take. When, Casey, when you say win it all, you mean win the primary or like become president of the United States, like win the primary in general? Oh, I think he could go all the way. I mean, I think if he gets out of the primary, I think he's extremely dangerous. Like, um, I, I just think he's, I just, yeah, I think he's extremely dangerous. So, like, okay. I think he's been underestimated at all of our risk is where I'm at. Oh, yeah, no. I think he's a goddamn fucking idiot. So that, and that brings me to my question to you. I, before we, before I give my take, I want to ask you a question. Because I agree with you. He is the, I wouldn't say perfect, but he has a great combination of noxious politics, basically cultural grievances that mean nothing, you do nothing, and utilizing that to harm Oklahomans at essentially every, right? Um, but leaning into the cultural politics in order to get that done to appeal uh, because his actual policies as they were, if you want to call them, that have absolutely no popularity whatsoever. So I, I agree with you that on that combination. My thing is political instincts and the moment, right? So. I ask you, do you, you say you think he can go all the way. Do you believe, one, do you believe he has the political instincts? And two, I consider that Trump is an anomaly, right? Like we, Trump was a is fucking he? death star. Yeah, because like no, no politician right or left can wield media like Trump can. Because no one has that background. Like Trump has been lying to people for over 40 years and... Hollywood made him a uh, businessman that he actually is not in all of those things. Like he's unique in that way. Like Donald Trump is mentioned on yeah. Get Rich or Die Trying. But do you think he has the political instincts? And considering that Trump's anomalous, do you think applying the traditional winds of po more traditional winds of politics still has a legitimate shot nationally? So the reason I think it is kind of twofold, and, and it, it addresses both of your concerns. First is, he's not a career politician, and, but he demolishes politicians. So, I mean, in his primary, he beat the former lieutenant governor, who I believe had been elected twice and was termed out. So he wiped out a, a cultural conservative with massive name ID, you know, career politician. He wiped out the very popular mayor of Oklahoma City, who had a huge constituency in the business Republican sphere. And then he beat, I mean, and being a Democrat in Oklahoma is not tough, but he did defeat a multi, I mean, uh, Drew Edmondson had been attorney general for 16 years, you know, in the past, like statewide. So he destroyed three career politicians. That's who he's going to be running against in the Republican primary. So that gets him through that. Then the media thing. And I I guess I buy the whole, like, Trump's a different thing. He knows how to work the media. And I do think that's true. But I think if you look at the pandemic and Stitt's response, he controlled the media. Like, he did these press conferences. And this was, like, an argument I made to many people on the left, 
center left in public health that was like, he's destroying you because what he does, he puts on these productions. Like he gets up, gets a bunch of dudes in white coats and says, like literally go out and die in the streets. I don't give a fuck. And people just lapped it up because he stands up and looks strong and says like his talking points. And he just pivots to that, even though what he's saying is factually inaccurate, scientifically wrong, is going to get thousands of people killed. And I know lots of other governors did that too. And there probably wasn't the political will to really resist COVID anyway. But I think that's where, um, I mean, that's where he can just play into that. I mean, he can look at the political landscape and just get up and say the thing that people kind of want to hear because he's completely shameless and doesn't give a shit how many people it hurts or who dies because of it. And I think that's what makes me scared of him is, is he can find those wet. I think he can demolish career politicians who is most of who he's going to be going up against. But then I also think he's good at manipulating the media to like just pivot back to his talking points and say the things that enough people out there want to hear. Because I think the thing to remember is, is like, I don't think he's going to win in like a landslide. I just think he is going to win. Like he just has to win six states by two points. You know, like he, that's all he has to do is just, he just has to change the math ever so slightly in half a dozen states. And that's not hard to do. Like that, that's, those are rounding errors. You know I mean? All it takes is for the other side to stumble a little bit and him to do a little better, and he's got it, you know? So I, that's where I think, like, we should be, like, real concerned. So I'm just going to play contrarian. Sure. Okay. Um, here's why oh, I don't think he has a shot. Number one, the national political landscape, particularly on that side, is a fucking landmine. And that landmine is Donald J. Trump. Right, like they are all beholden to him. And I don't, while I agree with you that he worked the Oklahoma media masterfully by just shamelessly lying about the number of COVID deaths. Hold on. And every, right, the entire time. And then every time there was a Smith news, uh, a lot of times he was just not responsible for it, like the tribe's vaccination rates. He did a great job saying, oh, look at Oklahoma, we're vaccinating people. And now when we're like fledgling in terms crickets. of vaccination rates, yeah. <laughs> crickets, right? Yeah. I don't believe he'll be able to work the national media as well. The national, and when I say national media, I mean the national right wing media, right? Uh, because that is all clickbait. I don't think he has the charisma and the wacky zaniness to get the clickbait needed on that side. Like, if you think about that side of the aisle and just using the pandemic, the person who got the clickbaits is Ron DeSantis. Why? Ron DeSantis had the political, and I think uh, of governors, well, of non-Donald Trumps right now, Ron DeSantis is the leader on that side of the aisle. Now, in politics, the 2024 primaries are a world away. And oh, by the way, it all comes down, frankly, to whether or not Trump runs. But just assuming right now he doesn't, right? The leader on that side of it is Ron DeSantis. Why? Ron DeSantis was able to build a national profile. He went to the White House. He lied shamelessly as well. He was very aggressive about it. Well, where, why aren't we dying yet? You know, all of that bullshit yeah. that Mike Pence standing next to him looked like a fucking lawn gnome. So that tells me Ron DeSantis has the ability to get national cameras on it. And again, thinking about like traditional political wins, you Trump, cameras follow Trump. Every other politician needs to get cameras to follow them. If you are um, stit, you're starting at a deficit because you're governor of Oklahoma for no other reason, right? Like Florida is a battleground state. Florida has been hella relevant in every election going on since at least 2000. I don't know prior to that, honestly, but it has been really America's political battlegr battleground since at least 2000. So cameras flood there. Trump stays there. So the Santos is aligned directly to him. He already loves the Santos. Talked about making him his VP. Um, uh, a battleground state again. So if you think about traditional politics, you generally want somebody, either president or vice president, to run from a battleground state so you can sew it up. 
Uh, that doesn't apply to people like Donald Trump. Again, he's a Death Star. But I do believe that will apply to whoever runs. And that's and that's relevant because the wackies want to win, the business class wants to win, right? So, like, if you think about it, do you want a governor of Florida running or you want a governor of Oklahoma running? You want a governor of Florida running because he can sew up Florida for you potentially. So just playing contrarian. Yeah. I don't disagree with anything you said. My main question is I don't believe Kevin Stitt can build a national political profile. I, I just, I mean, he just isn't, he is G. Willie Gosh kind of guy. That doesn't play over there. You have to be aggressively dickhead. Ted yeah. Cruz is an aggressive dickhead. Ron DeSantis yeah. is, is an aggressive dickhead. Um, yeah. Kevin Stitt is, is not that. He doesn't have that aggression I well, I, I he hasn't yeah, displayed I, it yet. He yeah, yeah. so we know it locally, right? Can he display that aggression and it be bought on a national stage? I don't believe so. I I mean, you know, I I definitely think obviously mm. if Trump runs, uh, most of them will duck out. I mean, I don't think any any of the Republican primary people can take him. So I think that's I mean that's obviously a deal breaker for most of them. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'll be interested to see how DeSantis and Trump, or I mean, Stitt, play off of each other. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I'm just not ready to discount Stitt. I think he can learn, and I think he's like, like his comms people. He's surrounding himself with those folks that can do that aggression, and he, like, you know, it's a question of like, can he be taught that? Like, can he be taught to? Uh, because I think he does have, like, the focus. Like, I do think he's disciplined enough. enough. Like, I, in some ways, I almost think Ron DeSantis, and I don't know him too well. I've watched some of his stuff. I mean, obviously, he's a Looney Tune. But, like, I get the sense that he gets, like, goaded pretty easily and can get pulled off message. Like, he can get provoked. And I, I actually don't think voters like that. I mean, people say that's, like, what was Trump, Trump was like, but uh, he's not. He, Trump is extremely message disciplined. Like, he can pivot it back to you know, his three racialized talking points every single time. I, I mean, it's crazy if you start watching Trump's speeches because they're all the same. It's just like the same sort of grievance. Like, I hate the media. I hate immigrants. I hate, you know, whatever this group. Like, and I just see, I think, I see Stitt having that level of discipline. But I agree. I mean, DeSantis definitely seems like the, the one to threaten him. I think Nikki Haley is beatable. I mean, most I think they're too racist. Sexist. I think they're too racist and sexist to yeah, actually uh, right. elect her. To be frank with you, like I yeah. think, yeah. Um, just being honest, and it pains me to say this, I don't know if the Democratic comfortable running a woman again after what happened in 2016 and and seeing uh, Biden sure. win, and that's that's on the uh, uh, center left side of the aisle. I don't think the I don't think they'll run a woman, especially a woman of color, at all. I don't think, just being frank with you, I don't think they even want to win that damn bad. So, like, um, but, okay, so really quickly, what do you think Stitt's presidential ambitions will mean for him statewide? Do you think some people that are turning, like, because, you know, I mean, I'm an Oklahoman, man, and, you know, putting your eyes on this national prize and you kind of forgetting about Oklahoma, do you, I mean, how would you, how do you think the local... Oh. I, I think he's so popular that he it's not going to be like, oh, if you do this, he won't win the uh, he won't win the governor. Right. Like, I, yeah. I think he's so popular. But I, I wonder, like, what effect. And, you know, he has well, to smoke and, with the legislature where they see weakness yeah, yeah. now. Like, oh, fuck him. Right. He went president. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, he'll he'll low key this through 2022. Like, he doesn't have to. I mean, you know, there will be some that announce early next year. But I mean, he doesn't have to announce until after he becomes gets reelected, I think. So, I mean, I think he'll be able to get reelected handily in 2022. Uh, he'll, I think that's you'll a see. a horrible thing to say. I know. Isn't that, that's like, I mean, the Dems yeah. need to get active, and they really need to be attacking him. Like, they need to find out what will bring him down. But nobody, everybody's too scared to do that. And if they weren't brave enough to do it during a global pandemic when 8,500 Oklahomans lost their lives, I don't see them being brave enough to do it in a 2022 cycle where they aren't going to win. But, like, my deal is I think you'll see him do it using 2022 as, like, a test bed. Like, he'll be testing messages. He'll be testing uh, things. And I think what, though, you're really going to see him do is is he's going to try to 
build a political machine. I mean, he's, I mean, we'll talk about this um, announcement about the, the random electric car company nobody's ever heard of in their entire lives coming here later. But and I got, I got a lot on that. That's, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, but I, but I think he's going to be doing more stuff like that. I mean, he's going to be finding who are the players, who are the things that I can support with state tax dollars and state resources, because I mean, that's how he's run his whole administration. It's all about rewarding donors and it's all about spoils, you know, to the winner goes the spoils. So, I mean, he's that, you know, he's, uh, Andrew Jackson, right? I mean, like, it's yeah. like, I'm a, cre- I'm a, I'm actually helping Oklahomans. Yeah, no, it's all about spoils. Yeah. So, but, but what I'm saying is, is like being the governor of a state and consolidating your power so dramatically and having all these spoils to give, I mean, that, you know, you can, you can build a national donor base. You can build a profile. You can, you know, get your name in the news. I think, I mean, I do agree with you. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have that like instant clickbait type personality. He's pretty, uncharismatic on a lot of these shows but i think again like i i just i think those skills can be taught to some extent and i definitely think he has the crazy 